I was wanting to go back to kids because that's kind of topic of this conversation anyway. YouTube and Instagram and TikTok are all media that are available today that may or may not be ruining kids' lives. But with every kid wanting to be a star and probably most kids not being able to, it is a new platform for bullying, for online trolls, for everything else. I've experienced that myself online. Well, Lindsay and I had a conversation last week. Social media is ruining our lives, basically. Uh, And that's basically what we were saying that the pressures that are on contemporary kids are much more than than what they were back in our time. And can vocal coaching help with that? Maybe. There's there's a couple of things to address there. First of all, I want to say I make a good proportion of my living online. And if the internet didn't exist, I would be Stony Brook. And also at this current time, when we're in lockdown, going on Facebook and finding out what's going on in the world around you and how people are there's a positive side of it. But yes, there is still very much a negative side. And I think we can't address a negative side. If you say to a kid, we'll just come off social media. Well, then you're asking them to remove themselves from the meeting place where they go to hang out with their peers. So that's just not realistic. But we have to give them the tools to help them build the resilience to cope with the nastiness. Now, I personally have seen some very low behavior from adults online as well, let alone kids and kids who haven't reached that level of maturity yet. You and I having this Zoom conversation, you know, so certain social norms apply. Like I'm not suddenly going to turn right and say to you, Patrick, I don't like your shirt. I do like your shirt. I'm just using that as an example. I think it's a very nice color. But if I suddenly said to you in person, say we were down the pub, I really don't like that shirt. Everybody at the table would go, she is so rude. Whereas if we were on Facebook and I wrote, nice shirt today, mate, looks like an old rag. That's acceptable for some reason. So there's like different (laughs) rules applying. And unfortunately, kids are having to to navigate this. I mean, we all know of very good friendships that have basically gone to pop over social media. And when you put out music, when you sing online, if it gets out beyond your friends and family, if it gets out there, it is absolutely a dead cert that at some point someone will post something nasty or you will get dislikes. You know, I've had dislikes on YouTube, you know, the odd negative remark. I, I, I had um, an attack on my business on Reddit that was so bad I actually had to get a lawyer involved. Yeah, so this kind of thing can happen. Like I had someone post on, on SoundCloud once about, you know, I, I posted a track which was actually recorded with Andrew Giddings of Jethro Tull, who has gone so many times multi-platinum that it's not a joke and I was like really honored to have worked and recorded with him but someone who I'd been to school with who was a couple of years below me at school who I actually didn't remember chose to write on this track that vocal is totally shocking and who can believe this song and I decided I was going to be flattered by that because you know (laughs) probably him being insecure you know and that's kind of the thing a lot of musicians kind of belittle other musicians because they're insecure and they're kind of worse I, I think you know to go to go back to like vocal coaching and how it can help with that I think the key way that it helps with building that resilience is first of all it teaches confidence and you the more confident you are and the more aware you are of your own ability the more you're going to be able to stand up to people who say nasty things to you and also it gives the child or the young person an expert opinion because I was talking earlier on about how the opinion of a peer is what matters to young people but on the other hand if you have someone who really knows their stuff telling you that you're good or that you need to work on something if the person is properly qualified you should be able to trust that opinion so if they get opinions coming at them from every direction and they don't know whose opinion to believe you can be the voice of reason because you know I run a business so I can't have people running all around the town or going online sounding shocking telling people that I teach them so if I say you're good you're good you can believe that because I'm not going to do down my own business I'm not just saying it to be nice to you it will be true if I say you need to work on something I'm not telling you that you're not good. I'm just saying, as I myself have had numerous things that I need to work on in my musicianship, I have the worst timing in the world ever, as anybody who's ever been in a studio with me will say, and anyone who's had to edit any of my piano parts will probably have this big bruise here from banging their head against a wall. We all have to work on. But it, it's like, I you know, look at it in terms of, I don't talk about weaknesses. I talk about development needs. It's not like, like I'm saying I have shocking timing. I wouldn't say of other people, this person is shocking timing. I would say could develop timing because I believe you can develop it, that it's not a permanent thing. If I got out a metronome every day and I played along to a metronome, my timing would improve. I could fix that. It is possible to fix that. So when we work on stuff, I just don't ever want anyone to leave a lesson ever feeling demoralized ever. 
I want them to feel as they go out the door, I can do this. I know what to do. I've got the tools to fix this problem. I've got the tools to meet this goal. Goals is something I talk about a lot with students, you know, what they actually want to achieve. With some people, that's very open-ended. Like some people will just come in and say, I want to improve my confidence. And that's a really good goal, actually. Or maybe they want to do exams or maybe they actually want to be a professional musician. And, you know, you'll have long-term goals. And then we break that down into short-term goals and what we can realistically achieve in a month towards your wider goal. So you want to be a professional musician. Okay, let's work on your first demo and getting your first demo recorded. And let's do that by learning the skills that you need to record that demo to the best standard possible. On a podcast today about unraveling unraveling habits. So what they said is it's it's not about starting a habit or stopping a habit. It's about unraveling that habit into the smaller habits and into like even even a micro habit that you can something that you can mm-hmm. do tangibly tomorrow, like one press up or one yeah. sit up. And that's something that you can do every day. You can do one sit up, but the goal is eventually that you'll have. But if you can do one yeah. uh, press up tomorrow, it's sort of the similar thing with vocal coaching. Yep. You know, can you, can you have, you've been lighted upon something really important there which is you have to do the work you don't come to lessons and have me wave a magic wand over you and suddenly you sound like freddie mercury you know what i mean i think i've said that before in this interview i'm repeating myself but you have to actually go away and do the exercises. i can show you what to do and i can work on things with you but the the level of commitment that you put into it is what you'll get back out now i'm realistic i know that real life happens sometimes work is really hectic sometimes one of the kids gets sick you know stuff happens and and if people come in and they say to me look i haven't been able to do as much work this week as i would have liked i understand and actually i would rather that people just said that than just pretended that they practiced but you do have to get it's about forming habits and i talked about how i had constriction in my voice that was a habit because i was singing like that over a period of time i'll tell you how that started actually one day in when i was in sixth form at school this we were singing in the choir at lunchtime and the teacher said the only voice i can hear in here is eve's and i was really embarrassed so to hide my voice and to not make it ring out over other people's because i have quite a big voice i tightened it because i didn't know how to make it quiet or safely so i just tightened it and i pushed it down and i constricted it and when i'd done that for two or three weeks lo and behold i'd formed a habit and a habit develops into a problem over time and there are some habits that develop into a skill over time so Mm. what i can do when you come into me is sometimes you might not even be aware of what your habits are i can tell you what habits you're practicing that are helpful and which are unhelpful 